Hi guys, I'm back uh, with another arcade PCB repair. Today we are going to look into uh, this board set, which you can see uh, on the table here. This is another copy of the game Pleiades, which was released in 1981 by M-Star and uh, Century, uh, and which was the um, successor of the popular arcade game Phoenix. Uh, this video is actually part four of a four video uh, series uh, repairing several, um, or to be exact, two uh, Phoenix uh, board sets and two Pleiades board sets. So this is the last uh, board set we are going to fix in this video series. If you didn't get a chance to watch the first videos, uh, you are of course very welcome to do so. I think uh, they covered some uh, really interesting uh, repairs. Uh, I still got the, the other repaired uh, Pleiades PCB on the bench and um, it is uh, luckily it is still uh, running. It is uh, still having some problems with the colors which is uh, due to uh, lacking uh, color from here. <clears throat> but that's not uh, too much of a problem. I already ordered a replacement prom um, pre-programmed with the correct content. Uh, on the web, which uh, should arrive in a couple of days, and then uh, this uh, PCB will be completely finished. Okay, so now let's uh, start to look at our final board set, this uh, other board set of Pleiades. My suggestion uh, would be to actually, actually start with this uh, Logic PCB, and uh, the way to go would be to actually hook it up with the known working uh, CPU PCB that we already fixed. So we know this is uh, uh, all the, that is over here on this PCB is working fine. Um, so we can uh, purely concentrate uh, on this logic PCB and as a first step get uh, this logic PCB uh, running. If we get this PCB running, we will uh, connect it with the um, non working CPU PCB that we have here. And uh, we will try then to get this uh, combination to run. Okay, so looking at the board, uh, one obvious problem is actually that we are missing some EEPROMs over here. The other EEPROMs seem to be complete. Um, some of the um, protective films had been removed, so I placed already some uh, tape over it so the EEPROMs don't get um, erased. Um, so uh, I think uh, what we will do first, even before we uh, start up the game or fiddle around, with, start fiddling around with the boards, we will burn a set of EEPROMs here from uh, the main uh, ROM uh, collection and uh, put them in. And uh, so if the board is complete, we can go for a first test. Okay, so I uh, burned a new set of EEPROMs um, for uh, the graphic EEPROMs, which are those two uh, uh, right here. And um, as before, uh, in uh, I think it uh, actually was uh, one of the Phoenix PCB uh, repairs, I uh, used some 27 uh, C32 ICs instead of 2716 and uh, just burned double the uh, content on the ROMs, which shouldn't be a problem uh, for the ROMs in this position also. So, okay, I guess we can give it a try and fire up the game. Okay. So what do we have? I think, well, power is on, nothing at all. Okay, just a black screen. Um, interesting. We didn't have this before, actually. Uh, up to now, we at least got some uh, garbage on the screen. So, well, um, let's, I guess, let's um, connect the logic probe. And we could start a probe for uh, the basic signals that the 
game needs to run like clock signal maybe there isn't even a clock signal present or it is a problem with the um, video output well let's see we'll hook up the uh, logic probe and uh, start our troubleshooting okay to see what is going on uh, with the game it's actually uh, the cpu is always a good place to start i think with the logic probe um, we can just look at the pins and see uh, what they are doing um, for instance uh, we are uh, having uh, some address and data lines uh, over here uh, they are actually floating at the moment as it looks yes a line that is high okay Um, well, without even knowing the pinout of the CPU by heart, you can already tell what the problem is because uh, we see that we don't have, that we do not have a single toggling signal on the CPU, uh, which uh, has to uh, mean that. Um, Probably we are actually really missing the clock. So let's take a look. The um, uh, CPU is right here. Clock signal should be this X1, which is pin one. And uh, yeah, looking at pin one, we see, okay, it's a high signal but it's not pulsing, so there is no clock. Very interesting. Okay, and uh, as we can see here, the clock signal is coming uh, from an IC, which is an end gate, or uh, excuse me, which is a NAND gate, I would say. It's IC4, pin eight, and the inputs are pin 9 and 10. Okay, so IC4 is over here. Pin 8 would be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, okay, so got the same thing here. And the inputs are low and low which makes sense if it is a NAND gate. So that is probably working. And yeah, as we would have um, uh, suspected, the, uh, <coughs> the signal lines here are coming from connector number two, pin 25, uh, from a signal cord HCP01 from the logic PCB. That makes completely sense because we know that the CPU PCB is working. The problem can't be on the CPU PCB. So we have to check where the uh, HCP01 uh, signal on the logic PCB is coming from. Okay, as you can see <clears throat> here, it is coming from uh, the logic PCB from IC number one. Um, and it is coming from pin four. Uh, I think it's getting negated here. Um, input is pin three, output is pin four. Let's take a look at IC number one, which is over here. Okay, so pin three is high, pin four is low. Okay, so that is not the cause. Uh, we have some counters here, as far as I can tell. And we have a flip-flop here, and we already see over here, this is the circuit where the clock signal, the basic clock signal for the PCB is generated. There's a I don't know, is it a one megahertz crystal, maybe? 
So let's maybe shorten uh, this search and uh, look also at pins 5 and 6 of IC1. Um, which would be over here. Okay, and they are also not toggling. Did I do this right? No, this is pin 5 and this is pin 6. So one high, one low. So this NOT gate is actually also working. But <clears throat> well, we could trace the problem black right to the right to the crystal and uh, to the diodes and ca capacitors surrounding it. So the area that oh, we already <laughs> okay. We can already guess what the problem might be. There's some sort of corrosion going on around here. So this should be. Uh, the origin of the uh, issue of the missing uh, clock signals. Okay, looking at this area through the microscope, we can see uh, what is going on here. There's actually there's lots of um, oxidation going on on the uh, solder connections of the parts and um, this actually it's not too bad around here, but definitely over here. Um, this looks like actually uh, damage caused by uh, battery acid, for instance. So I, I think we will unsolder the parts in this uh, area. And um, yeah, we will try to uh, freshen up the solar uh, connections and see uh, if we're getting our clock signal back. Okay, so when I remove this uh, quartz oscillator, 11 megahertz, by the way, uh, from the PCB, you can see that uh, the legs, which were pretty brittle, uh, actually bro both broke off, one uh, with a bigger part here. Um, I already try to scrape the oxidation of the legs of this um, uh, crystal oscillator so they are looking kind of clean at the moment and I'm going to try to solder um, this uh, part uh, back into the PCB um, maybe uh, adding some wire to um, make the legs uh, reach into the through holes Let's see if we can actually save this uh, part or if we will have to replace it. Okay, so <clears throat> I managed to fix this with the parts that were on the board. I think it, uh, it actually turned out pretty nice, I would say. Got rid of the corrosion, did put some new legs on the oscillator. Okay, so now we can uh, hook this back up and uh, go for another test run. Okay, so I got the uh, PCB hooked up again. So let's check what we get now. Okay, so we have some graphics, which is great. And, well, apart from that, the game doesn't seem to be doing much. Uh, but at least we got some activity. We obviously must have a clock signal now. Yes, we do. That's very good. Okay, but the CPU obviously isn't executing the program. Uh, I would think so. The next step, um, I think, would be now to make sure that these uh, program EPROMs here, those eight EPROMs, they are uh, that they are actually okay and that they are holding the uh, correct content. So I will um, check them in my EPROM reader and compare them to the uh, main uh, ROM collection. And uh, we will see if uh, they are okay, or if uh, some of them need to be reburned or replaced. 
Okay, I tested all the EEPROMs uh, in the reader and um, they turned out to be all uh, comparing uh, perfectly to the uh, MAME ROM collection, so they are all fine. And I actually hooked up the Fluke uh, and I already did um, uh, a ROM tests um, like we did with, with the last repair. Um, and uh, actually all the ROMs, um, all the eight program ROMs can be uh, read and they are returning uh, good results all the time. So no problems with the ROMs really, but um, um, it says here, okay. But uh, as uh, with the last repair, we still didn't get much of anything out of the game. Um, while there was a problem with the um, with the video uh, circuit and with the uh, video RAM, so um, from regarding our uh, experience we gained uh, on the last repair, I would suggest that we now uh, look at the uh, video circuitry, especially at the RAMs and the ROMs, and see if there's any fault um, in this area. Just poking around with the logic probe. Okay, so I did poke around with my logic probe um, and in the in the area of the video RAMs, video ROMs uh, and the addressing uh, circuit, uh, etc, etc. And I didn't find uh, pretty much anything out of the ordinary. So all uh, signals are online and um, everything seems to be pretty much working. Um, what you have to say there's a certain limitation to this statement because uh, there's those RAM chips involved and um, the RAM chips are actually hard to test just using a logic probe because uh, if you think about maybe one uh, RAM chip not working right, not doing anything, it will be hard to tell uh, just with a logic probe because um, the RAMs are connected to a common bus so you will find data lines toggling uh, but maybe just because three of the RAMs are working and not all four. That, that could be actually a problem uh, that we cannot detect here. And something I just noticed is um, I was thinking about switching the RAMs, taking the RAMs out of this board and putting uh, the RAM chips, the known working RAM chips from the other board into this board. But, uh, well, um, this, the RAM chips on this board aren't socketed, whereas on, on my uh, first working board that we have here, all the RAM chips uh, did have sockets from the start. Um, that's a kind of a difference. And another thing I noticed when I came across this is that if you look at these RAM chips, uh, those four over here and those four over here, you can see that there's at least four kinds of uh, different brand uh, brands for those chips, I think. So it's a, a, a complete mixture of different RAM chips um, that have been used here. That lets me leads me to believe that maybe at some point some of them uh, actually have been defective and needed to be replaced. Uh, that is uh, very interesting. And uh, what is also very interesting, I actually uh, the game is uh, running at the moment. <clears throat> the other PCB is running at the moment, but if I uh, remove one of the RAM chips, uh, for instance, I just get one out of the socket, and fire up the game again, then it will not, uh, it will not actually run and have some graphical glitch, but it will uh, not run at all and so uh, show us uh, something like this on the screen. So. Uh, a damaged RAM, a damaged video RAM, actually prevents the game from uh, from running at all. So uh, it could very well be that we have uh, a problem with the RAM chip here uh, in the video circuit. So um, you could actually detect this using a logic analyzer. But again, I think this is up in the attic. So I would uh, actually actually suggest that I socket these RAM chips that I take the time and unsolder those, put sockets in for them, and then we can uh, actually swap them out with our working board and see if we maybe uh, 
uh, that way we get this uh, PCB running. That's at least uh, worth a try, I think. Okay, so I started um, in this region over here and I did replace um, uh, those four memory chips with uh, sockets. These are the memory chips that I um, took out of the board. Um, and I already did put uh, four different memory chips in from uh, the other Pleiades PCB. And if we turn on the game now, then the game is running. So we actually found a problem. Uh, one of those, or several, I don't know, of those RAM chips must be bad. So <clears throat> I uh, would now suggest that we uh, put them in one by one. And uh, in uh, that ma manner, we can uh, maybe work out which um, of those RAM chips are actually failing. Okay, so as it turns out, two RAM chips are okay. And whenever I put these two in, no matter into which of the four sockets, uh, the game will not start up. These two are uh, still taken from the other board, but with those two in, um, the game is actually uh, still working fine. So I will have to get two uh, replacement RAM chips, I, I guess. Okay, so uh, additionally, I added some sockets to the RAMs over here. Uh, in the background uh, graphics uh, video RAM section. So in case any of the other RAMs decide to fail in the future, uh, they are easy to replace. I just did this uh, to get an equal situation on those uh, two uh, RAM banks. And so I don't have to uh, get out my soldering iron on this board again. Um, yeah, uh, still works, no problem. And I already did connect the last uh, CPU PCB, um, which we did not try so far. This is the one with the black connectors. The other board I repaired had the, had the blue connectors. Um, actually, this board was missing some chips. I already uh, got some uh, replacement PROM chips. Um, and uh, I had to borrow one chip, I think this one over here, which was socketed, which is just a regular 74 TTL chip, I uh, had to borrow it uh, from the other board. Uh, all the other stuff I could get out of the spare boards that was missing, except only one minor thing, and this is uh, a chip that is missing, and that is uh, the sound chip of the game, or the, the uh, or rather the chip that creates the, the music of the game. So I don't, I, unfortunately, I only have one, of those uh, custom music uh, chips and uh, uh, well so uh, I, I guess one of the uh, Pleiades PCBs will end up having no music uh, but I think I can live with that I don't think that I can get a spare uh, just I see uh, anywhere other than maybe from uh, another dead uh, Pleiades PCB uh, but that's not so much of a deal what is great is that um, I didn't do anything to this board. I just populated it to this CPU board. And when we fire it up now, we can see that it is all already uh, working. So uh, actually nothing wrong with this uh, second uh, CPU board. And the logic board we did just fix. So we got uh, the second set of uh, Pleiades working. Okay, so um, just great. I, I, I mean, we reached our goal. We wanted to get four uh, working board sets um, out of uh, the uh, eBay package of 12 non-working PCBs. And this is actually what we did. So two complete games of Phoenix, two complete games of Pleiades and uh, everything working fine. Absolutely great result. Um, just uh, just for fun, I um, I would show you the the initial picture of the twelve boards, uh, how I laid them out on the floor, and um, actually in the picture I did mark uh, the ICs that were actually bad. So 
here you get a little overview uh, over all our uh, four uh, videos uh, what we actually had to do to the boards um, to uh, get them all uh, back uh, to work again so uh, if you watched all the four parts of this uh, lengthy uh, series of videos i really uh, thank you very much for taking the time I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, this uh, video series of Phoenix and Pleiades and um, hopefully uh, you will uh, maybe subscribe to my channel and watch uh, the further uh, videos that are upcoming. So thank you very much for now uh, and uh, of course as always uh, see you in the next video.